This is a brief demo of the 3D interface on CloudRF. When you open the interface for the first time, you'll find yourself over at an island in the Mediterranean here, and you've got some layers that you can choose. So we're going to leave on the default satellite imagery. And if you've got a high performance computer, you want to put on the 3D terrain and the 3D buildings, uh, because that will also sharpen up the resolution. So I'm going to go and place a Lora WAN uh, base station on the hillside over here, um, overlooking the town and the harbour, and we'll see what uh, output we get using the area analysis tool, first of all. So Lora WAN, uh, I'm just going to pick a network test. This is needed for functions later on where we might be picking a best server or merging layers. I'm just going to call that uh, site A. We're two meters off the ground. Our signal is European ISM band 868 and we're 0.1 watt. We've got no feeder, we've got the stock antenna, uh, which is just a dipole with 2.15 dBi gain. Now because we're low Rowan, we have a very low uh, noise threshold, we can bring that down and we receive a warning saying your threshold is very low, but that's fine because we're, we're low Rowan. Uh, we're just going to set the receive gain and the height off the ground, two meters and two dBi for another stock antenna. The model for this band is the Longley Rice irregular terrain model. Uh, we're going to leave that on because it's ideally suited for these uh, sorts of uh, wavelengths. And we'll just leave those settings as they are. Diffraction is already included in Longley Rice. Now Clutter, this is one of the USPs of CloudRF, has been able to manipulate 3D buildings. Uh, we're going to have soft clutter and we're going to set the attenuation of these buildings to 0.5 decibels per meter. And the output, uh, we're going to go for 16 meter resolution at five kilometer radius. And this will affect the calculation time. As you can see, that didn't take very long. Now, as I move my cursor around, you'll see uh, the value in the tooltip matches the color key on the right here. I can go ahead and look at the town and see why did the signal just stop here in the middle of the town? Uh, well, the answer in the 3D map becomes apparent. Uh, because there's lots of tall buildings in the town uh, that are obstructing the signal. So if we're two meters off the ground, uh, we're not picking up a signal down here. The next tool I want to show you is the path profile tool, which is the ruler up here. It uses exactly the same settings as what we put in the form, so we don't need to repeat that exercise. We can just click the ruler and then go and click somewhere on the map to place the remote end of this link. So I'm going to go ahead and go for just here. And there we have a red link. It's NEG 141, which is just lower than our threshold here. However, if I bring it back up here, we have NEG 93. And we've also got line of sight, which is why the line is green. And the Fresnel zone, which is the red um, ellipse, is obstructed, but that's okay. And if we want to see uh, where it's obstructed with these buildings, if I slide my cursor along the bottom here, um, you see a little white ball has appeared on the map and we can go ahead and see where that obstruction is sitting in 3D. So those are just two of the core features in CloudRF and you can export all of these uh, to different exports to take them away with you. So I can click this now and go and download a PNG and all those layers that I created are in my archive. So I can go and scrap whatever's on the map and go and fetch it from the archive here and take it away as uh, one of many file formats, KMZ, uh, KML, shapefile, geotiff, um, or a, a URL or a piece of HTML to embed that on a website.